Folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with the Vertilac. Vertilac is one of the three Archon melees, and it's the latest addition within the Whip family. The last Whip we ever got was the Galvacord, which came out with uh, Fortuna, if I'm not mistaken. Right here, I'll compare the Vertilac to the Atarax since they're kind of similar, both being heavy in slash and being high in crit. As you can see here, its overall stats are way, way better than the Atarax, having slightly less crit damage multiplier and slightly less, but Vertilac has better attack speed, better crit chance, and higher base damage. And the Vertilac also comes with a unique unique mechanic. If you do a block combo, you release a toxin projectile. Unfortunately, with all my energy color changes and emissive, the, the projectile is still this color. This projectile throne has three combos. Each combo has their own damage multiplier. First strike is 400% damage multiplier. Second one is 200 and the last one being 500. I'm not sure why it gets weaker on the second strike, but with the combos I'm about to show you, you don't even need to hit a second time. You can literally just one shot anything. Instead of just giving you the weapon builds, showing you, oh, this is what it does. I'm going to come at you with some synergies that you can use with this weapon. Yes, Warframe and weapon synergies just to take it to the next level level than just keeping it quite simple. See, the weapon has really good status chance and being heavy in slash already gives you an idea of how we can build this weapon. So these builds are going to be formulated around the projectile mechanic, simple combos, and even heavy attacks. Since it's a whip, heavy attacks force proc bleeds. So that's a good thing right there. Now, if you've seen the intro montage, I did use Zephyr and Ivara. Now, the reason I'm using Ivara here is because of one thing. For Prowl, Ivara's Prowl gives you a headshot damage multiplier. So anything hitting the head will allow you to do more damage. And guess what? You can actually headshot with these projectiles. And on top of that, I'm using gas. Now, gas clouds are able to hit any part of the body, even headshots, and can double dip with headshot multipliers. So I'll show you the damage with and without her Prowl. So that's without her prowl. And that's with her prowl. Do you see the difference there? <laughs> there you go. Hey, hey you, I see you haven't followed the Twitch. Be sure to do that because every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, 12 p.m. CET, I'm live there. So if you're chilling, you have nowhere to go, you wanna hang out, talk some uh, Warframe or any other video game, be sure to hit that follow so you can be alerted whenever I go live. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? See you there. So now let me go over the Vertilac build I'll be using for this loadout. We'll start off with the Vara, then I'll go over to the Zephyr loadout. The Vertilac build is just like your any combo build. You have your Condition Overload, which is stacking base damage multiplier with each unique status effect on a target, which completely <laughs> overshadows Prime Pressure Point by itself. Blood Rush for the crit chance with each combo, stacking up to 11 times. Prime Fury for attack speed, you can go with Berserker, Quickening doesn't matter. 
it is what it is now this is your faction damage mod this will multiply your outgoing damage on the initial hit and every other dot this is so important if you're going into steel path now if you're not worried about steel path or anything like that and you don't care about scaling damage literally replace this with gladiator might that's it but if you want actual damage damage that can completely change how you play definitely grab a faction damage mod if you don't have a prime one use a regular one a regular one will still give you more damage regardless because the regular one will benefit damage over time builds and this right here is a damage over time build prime reach for the range this is only to help me build up combo now if you don't care about the uh, range when you swing your melee since you're grouping up enemies yes you can replace this with ladder might it does have three meters of range which is fairly good and you can actually do this weeping wounds for your status chance increase because guess what having a higher status chance will allow you to proc those dot's even better and also increasing your damage output crit damage will multiply all of the damage your crits deal and if you're running two of these that's a bigger damage increase and of course the elemental mod heat now you're wondering, wait, how are you getting gas when you have heat? Remember what I said earlier? The projectiles deal toxin damage. So that elemental damage type will combine with your modded elemental damage to form gas. So this saves you on modding space. And for the primer, basically your utility weapon that will help you proc other status effects is going to be the Epitaph. I have the two multi-shot mods. Lethal Torrent is going to give me all the fire rate I need. We, you don't want to over cap on fire rate because you'll end up doing a charge shot, which is a single target shot and cater to focused damage rather than AOE proccing. We have Frostbite and Ice Storm to overweigh my viral damage so I can proc it a lot more frequent and more consistent since we want to debuff the enemies with a viral status effect. Since viral damage isn't what makes viral great. And heat. And since this is the epitaph that will force proc cold and blast and some IPS. So greatly increasing your damage output with condition overload. And suppress since I'm running Ivara, I don't want to be uncloaked. This will silence my weapon. Sure Sean to increase my status chance. No galvanized shot is 10% less, so not worth using. And fulmination to increase its AoE. Now, if you don't have Prime Sure Footed, I would advise you to stand a little bit back or use the regular version of Fulmination. Dexterity is here just for the combo counter, and that's about it. Now for the focus cool here, I decided to run Naromon. It's been a while since we've seen Naromon. The reason I'm using Naramon here is because of Power Spike. Power Spike will have my combo decay over time rather than completely disappearing. The reason why I'm running Naramon is because I want to be in my throne whip stance a lot longer than my actual combo. Since the projectile itself doesn't give you combo. For example, here. So that's that's my melee right there. No combo. Throw it. See, no combo buildup. You actually have to physically hit enemies for you to get combo. Hence why I'm not depending on the two arcane dexterities and more focused on just sticking with Naramont. And you're going to be invisible, so you don't have to worry much about survivability. And you have rolling guard. Taking a look at the Avara build. Here we go. Combat discipline in the aura. Now, you've seen this quite a bit. And what this does is allow you to deal damage to your health as you kill enemies. Now, why would you want to deal damage to your health? Yes, it heals allies, but why would you want to deal damage to your health specifically? It's because to proc Arcane Avenger. Arcane Avenger will just give you more crit chance on all your weapons. And this arcane will trigger when you take damage. Now, since you're invisible, nobody can see you. You can't consistently proc this. What's the next best? option and that's why we're using combat discipline prime sure-footed of course if you don't have this use handspring or pain threshold since you're going to be running the epitaph power strength at 199 percent thanks to transient fortitude and umbral intensify now why do you need power strength is because to increase the headshot multiplier on prowl as you can see right there 
we have a 1.8 times headshot multiplier flow and equilibrium this is going to replenish our energy and also our health yes this is going to be our main source of healing as well as main source of energy income if you pick up health orbs it converts into energy energy orbs into health depending on which one is maxed of course duration to counteract transient fortitude and helps with the drain per second on prowl prime reach arcane Hulker Reach and Stretch is here because of its snare to group up enemies so we can hit them with gas damage. Some of you might be asking, oh, why don't you use Navigator? It actually messes up the damage output on the projectiles. And I found out that I dealt way more damage without the Navigator, even though I've let it travel pretty far. All right, here we are with Zephyr. Now this is the second synergy I would like to show you using the similar Vertilac build as the Ivara one. But what makes this different this time is because I'll be running in Snare and the Funnel Clouds all if you don't know what her tornadoes do, they distribute damage, status effects, and increase your critical damage output. But they do lift up and ragdoll enemies. Funnel clouds will not ragdoll enemies, make them smaller, however, and will increase the amount of tornadoes. And if you combine that with ensnare, it's going to concentrate that damage so much that you're going to be one-shotting things. This works with other weapons as well, but hey, why not do it with the new Vertilac? Because it's a synergy. And there you have it. This is the ensnare funnel clouds with the new Vertilac whip. Let's do that again. Group them up. Funnel clouds. Boom. Dead. I didn't even get to hit the second time, but as you can see, that's, that's Zephyr. Reminder, same weapon build as you saw with the Avara. All I did was use this Zephyr build. Now, the reason I kept Air Burst because it is a good CC and it clumps them up and you can combine it with Ensnare and it also helps out with Tornadoes as well because if enemies are stuck outside of the Tornadoes, you can drag them in with your Air Burst since Ensnare will be on cooldown within that group. Growing power, getting that 25% power strength when procking a status effect, and you have your Umbral Intensify. This will help out my damage output on my Tornadoes. Prime Surefooted, you know the deal. And our only range mod here is Stretch. Yes, I know, it's kind of hurtful because we have to use the Funnel Clouds Augment. Natural Talents, hey, this is a quality of life mod. If you don't want to use this, you don't have to. But trust me, you will see the difference when you use it and you don't. Prime Continuity for the Duration. This helps out her three abilities. Ensnare, well, Ensnare is not her original ability. Her Turbulence and Clouds. Equilibrium and Flow, of course, to give me energy back because it's going to be a spammy build. Group 4 hit. Group 4 hit. It's going to be in that order. So you will need a decent amount of energy. Arcane Strike for the attack speed. You can actually swap this out for Arcane Fury if you want just a little bit more damage. But le legit, dude, you're not going to need any more damage than this. Because the enemies are just going to be dead and alive. I know some people will bring up, hey, why don't you do this on Wisp? I mean, you technically can. Breach Surge just makes things deadly. But, you know, this was the obvious choice. It was the obvious choice. So group them up, prime them, Breach Surge, and do that. Yes, that, that of course, is a lot of damage. And the build is pretty straightforward. Combat Discipline, Arcane Avenger, Power Strength, and your other survivability mods. Again, it's a very basic, basic build. You can replace Fuse Reservoir with Equilibrium if you want more energy output. All right, so now let's check out the Heavy Attack build. I'm just going to show you how it works in action. We have no ensnare here or anything like that. Just, you know, prime enemies. Get the viral stacks. You don't have to do this if you if you don't want to. There you go. Heavy attack. They just die. Knocks them down. Unfortunately, isn't as powerful as the, uh, the projectile build, but it still does a decent amount of damage, especially if you prime the enemies. There you go, 416,000 damage. The build is like any other heavy attack build. Oh, look at that, no surprise. You can run both of these mods. Corrupt Charge, giving you initial combo because heavy attack damage also scales off combo. Crit damage, 
crit damage, multiplying the damage your crits deal, reach so you can hit more enemies in the area, and of course, multiplying your bleed damage with your faction mod. Again, the stance does not matter with heavy attacks. And now let's switch off to our regular combo build. Now, as you saw, I changed the stance to Coiling Viper. This is more flexible to use than your Burning Wasp. You can use this if you want to, and it functions like an actual whip. And there you go. Make sure you prime your enemies. You can use the new core if you want. I'm just using the epitaph because I was using the epitaph. And you have your infamous spin to win. Speaking of spin to win, guess what? What you can do if you do want to use maiming strike. I mean, remember those days? Maiming strike. Damn. Good times. Good times, right? Yes, you can replace Gladiator Might with Maiming Strike. It works the same. That's pretty much your Maiming Strike build. Is this going to be any good? <sighs> it works, but hey, is it the red crit monster that we used to know? No, it's not. It's not the red crit monster that Maiming Strike used to be. But yeah, we're getting some red crits in there some red crits copium but hey it's killing enemies this will be very good for regular regular missions regular missions i guess if you want to do both combo and maybe strike yeah you can keep this here so you can hit a little bit and then switch to a spin attack but no you're better off running gladiator mites this is what you'll be building it for and for this loadout for the projectile if you do want to use a electric mod will give you corrosive it's corrosive damage doesn't have good aoe it'll be good against single target especially if you want to kill an acolyte really quickly yeah this will be pretty good but you're better off running this remember what i said about gladiator might with reach if you want to use this more for combos and then use your projectile you can switch reach with gladiator might but if you're just going to use it for the projectile then your gladiator might is your best in slots you still get three meters of range i know you're loop i know you're losing all that extra three meters if you want more damage of the projectile this this is the way to go so it also depends how you want to play this. You want to go this the Zephyr route, the Avara route, or the Wisp route. Still, a lot of damage either way. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. That has been it from this video. I hope you've learned something. And if you enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content streams and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace.